as soon as the roles were released in Red Dead Online, if you would have asked me what the best role was for money, I would have told you straight up that it was the trader. After doing some more research, finding out more about the role, I am now in two minds about that because I honestly think the collector role is going to make you a load more money. And the best thing about collector? To make the most amount of money, you don't have to be in a posse. With trader, it's best to be in a posse because you do multiple runs, and each time you send off a large delivery, you get half your posse leader's money. Meaning, if you're in a posse of four, you're 625, then 312.50 for each of your posse members, $1,562.50 for about four hours, maybe a little bit over of work. There is a separate video on that if you want to check it out on the channel. Credit for this goes to someone called Nox Mora. I found it on Reddit. This map is crazy. The amount of work they've put into it. And there's a little, like, description kind of thing. So this is the map here on Reddit. And I will zoom in and show you around, like, different areas. There'll be a link in the description if you want to use the map yourself. So, taking a look at the map, you've got all the different colours of the collectibles. There's a few tips down here. Look for the metal detector digs almost exclusively. Lemoyne and Roanoke Ridge are the most lucrative runs. Spawns are on a three-day minimum rotation and reset is at 2 a.m. EST with the daily challenges. Meaning 7 a.m. UK time every day. That is when all the collectibles reset. Three days later, so if you go for, let's just say you find the coin on Monday. If you go back on Thursday, it will be there again in exactly the same spot. Madame Nazar also moves to a new location at this time. Then, if we go up to here, this map is incomplete, mostly because I hate New Austin. So this map was built up over the course of five days. So if we go and we have a look, let's go down to here, just over to the east of Braithwaite Manor, you've got a bunch of four. You won't necessarily find all four of those on the same day, you might have to go back a day or two later. But if you take a look, this is literally between Rhodes, saint -Denis, up to Blue Water Marsh, and over to just north of Rhodes, there are so many circles of where these collectibles are. So what I've done is a, a rough calculation, like it's pretty much just an estimate of how much you can make doing this. It's not guaranteed to make this much, it depends how much you're grinding. But let's use this location down here as an example. We have four clumped together. If they're on the same day, that's four that you're going to get in probably a minute, maybe 90 seconds or so. So what I've done is, like, it's all averages that I've worked out myself. If you average three collectibles in two minutes, times that by five, you've got 15 in 10 minutes. Times that by six, you've got 90 collectibles in 60 minutes. Just to make it easier to work out, I've, like, taken some off, and we're going to say that you are finding a collectible per minute just because there are extras on here that will require you to do some digging. We'll say there's an average of $10 per collectible, meaning you are making $600 per hour without a collection. If you are close to a collection and you find the last couple you need, that's even more money. And once you get into this and you start doing it, like if you want to work on it daily, you'll find routes that are more efficient, more beneficial to make money, closer to Madame Nazar, loads of things like that. But we're going to take that $600 as the average and we're going to times that by four so that we've calculated four hours worth of doing this which is going to put your cash total up to $2,400. And if you compare that to trading, with a full posse of four, you're only making $1,562. So it's about $830, like $840, we're going to say, profit on top of trading. But the best thing is, if you have all three of the rolls, you can literally go to Crips at your camp with trading, you can go farm some mats, do a supply mission if you need to, and then whilst that's building up passively, you can go on the hunt for collectibles around the area. You can make even more money. The money potential from these roles is incredible if you just understand what you're doing. With the trade-in, it takes 3 hours 20 minutes for your goods to build up to 100. Providing you already have everything set out, like the large delivery wagon. You can use the hunting wagon, although I wouldn't say that's very good after more experience with it. But a large delivery of 100 goods is going to be $625. 3 hours 20 minutes for that to build up. We'll say 10-15 minutes, give or take, to do supply missions. And then we'll say half an hour, 45 minutes, with a posse of four players to go do all of the deliveries. That's four hours roughly, maybe a little bit over, and that's going to net you 15 62 50 
whereas this is getting you 2400 even if you get less if you're making 500 dollars per hour that's still 440 dollars more than trading over the course of four hours so remember these collectibles reset every single day it should be at the same time the daily challenges reset and also madame nazar will move somewhere else on the map every three days the collection you found on the first day or the collectible you found on the first day sorry you will find again three days later then three days after that three days after that so on and so forth this works solo or you can do it in a group because the collectibles are the same for every single person this was making i estimated it to be 600 dollars per hour that is without any collections if you can make a collection from these you're going to get even more money i think when i calculated it there's nine antique alcohol bottles and they total like $62 or something when you sell them separately, put them all into a collection, mail that off to Madame Nazar, and you get $160. So that's like, I think it was roughly a $95 profit for saving the collection over selling the antique bottle separately. So steer clear of the binoculars, you won't need them. Make sure you use your metal detector. And if you need help with locations, there's a link to the map in the description. If there's anything else you would like to know, let me know in the comments and I'll cover it. But that's going to do it for the video. Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments as well. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it helped you out. Thank you for watching.